Well, good night. <laughs> you know, whatever was said and done, I couldn't do it on my own. But God is faithful, and uh, I thank him for whatever went out. Um, we have many who came on Sunday mornings that I know they needed the Lord, they needed to be helped. And I think the message went out. And for that, I am really thankful. I'm really thankful for your kindnesses again and getting to know you a little better than I knew you before. Um, the Lord is faithful. And um, I was going to tell you, uh, last Sunday night when I drove home, I didn't have one bit of pain. And the deer were all over the road and I did not meet in a wreck. So I thought, well, let me tell them that, you know, you all prayed for me before I left. And God does hear and answer prayers. You know, I always say that if you, if you do anything wrong, he sees you. If you say anything wrong, he hears you. So when we say anything right, he's going to hear us. Um, sometimes you hear people say, oh, my prayers didn't reach the ceiling. Yes, it did. God heard, and he does answer prayers in due time. I was thinking tonight of the, uh, the short, uh, should I say sentence or phrase, for his mercy endureth forever. For his mercy endureth forever. God does not just start something and say, well, I'm going to quit right here. It's forever, forever. Mercy stream, you probably, well, you live near to the lakes, but we're talking about stream, gushing down. We live in Grenada, and if you go to a waterfall, you'll just think of whenever you see a waterfall and you see that water coming over, just think, oh, that's just how God's mercy is like. It's gushing down, and nothing could stop it, and it endures forever. Isn't that wonderful? His mercy endures forever. And tonight I, I was um, thinking about mercy and grace. Mercy and grace. And I chose to read 2 Peter 1 beginning at verse 2 to 10. It says grace and peace. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Um, if you don't know him, you can't expect to receive. As you know him, as you study about him, God is going to multiply the grace and the peace unto you. But we have to know him personally. We cannot be serving the devil and expect God's mercy and peace. And it says, according to his divine power, hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. He does not withhold. He does not withhold anything from those who love him. It says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Can we really count the promises of God? They're numerous. And his promises are true and he's faithful in meeting our needs, in answering our prayers. Um, it says that by these we might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. We can be partakers of the divine nature through his spirit, 
through his spirit. You know, sometimes when the spirit is moving and, and, and leading and filling us, we feel that we don't belong to this earth. We could feel a little bit of that glory. That is wonderful. And beside this, giving all diligence, giving all diligence, he said, add, add. He doesn't want us to subtract from godly living and from growing in grace. He said, keep adding to it. Add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and to patience godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity for all these things for if all these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, these things are attainable. They are attainable. The fruit of the Spirit is attainable. He would not put something before our eyes and dangle them before us if they are not attainable. He wants us to have them. He wants us to grow to heights higher than we are right now. He likes to see us grow and not shrink. He says, but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sin. We don't want to forget what God has done for us. We have to continue to grow in grace and not let the things of this world blind us. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, Ye shall never fail. We had election pass here. We're not talking about that election. But uh, an elected member of God's kingdom, be sure our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And he says, For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly, into the everlasting kingdom. So your name is written in the book of life. So there is an entrance. You can enter. And it says, Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, through though ye know them, and be established in the present truth. Um, I was thinking about grace and mercy, grace and mercy. None of us deserve to be here alive and well. We are not, uh, God did not promise you to live past your 80 and your 90 and, uh, you know, he, did, he didn't say that. He says, if you honor your parents, your days may be long um, in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And, uh, you know, once we meet our 70 years which was promised, whatever we have left over is God's mercy that we are here. And uh, he leaves us here. He left us here for a reason. Because, you know, you have a child or a grandchild to whom you need to testify. You need to get a hold of that person. And the Lord say, I'm going to keep her here a little longer. And we sing that uh, song, wait a little longer, please, Jesus. A few more days to get my loved ones in. Folks, uh, loved ones are important to us. And uh, we want to see them get into the kingdom. 
Uh, so we're talking now about God's mercy and God's grace. That's two big words. Mercy. That's why we're here tonight. God was merciful to us to save us from sin. And so I kind of like um, looked into grace. And it says, uh, grace is a free unmerited favor from God. We didn't deserve it, we didn't work for it, we didn't earn it. He gave it to us freely. Receiving what we do not deserve. God's blessing, his grace is rich, smooth, free, tasty, forgiving, anything that you really enjoy in life, ice cream, whenever you taste it, can you say, I wonder if I could taste grace? Well, that's a little bit of it. Something that Brother Presley likes. So when you taste that ice cream, oh, God's grace is just so wonderful. It's better than the ice cream. Ephesians 2, 8 to 9 say, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. We couldn't save ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Some people could do better than others on the job. Some people could earn favors or merits better than others. They know how to beg. It's not by what we do, but God so loved us that he gave us this grace. It's an unmerited favor. And uh, it says, uh, his grace is for all, the strong, the weak, the young and the old. He is no respecter of persons. He is fair and he is just. That's what we were talking about this morning in Sunday school. Fairness. God is fair. He is just. He is going to give us what we deserve. We are sanctified by faith. We are so undeserving, but God's grace saves, sanctifies, and keeps. What we were unable to do for ourselves, God did for us. He took your place and my place on the cross. We were the ones who deserved crucifixion on the cross. But he died in my place and in your place. He paid the price. He did not owe anything, but he paid the price for us. His grace is greater than my sins. Can you go back to your childhood days as far as you could remember when you started sinning? Can you remember all the things that you did wrong and you're ashamed of them? His grace took care of that. His mercy took care of that. Your parents might have given you a spanking and they might have punished you for sometimes for things you did not do. But God's grace took care of all of that. We don't have to feel condemnation in our heart over the things that had happened in our young days. There is no condemnation because his grace took care of that. His grace set my spirit free. We are no longer in bondage. We are no longer in bondage. That's why we could sing and we could shout and we could testify and we could raise our hands because we're not in bondage. We are free. And it says in Hebrews uh, 4.16, it says, come boldly, come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Can you remember any time when you were desperately needing help when God's grace was not sufficient? He's a very present help in time of trouble, very present. Sometimes things happen unawares. We did not know it was going to happen, but God was there before we got there. And he took care of our needs. The song that we sing sometimes says, he giveth more grace. He giveth more grace 
when the burdens grow greater. He giveth more grace. Where just when you think you cannot go any further, God comes and pours out grace. When uh, he sendeth more strength, when the labors increase. Wow. I thought of Brother Presley uh, walking here on the building, and uh, I could tell he's tired. I could tell, but he keeps going. He keeps going. I'm not saying that uh, he couldn't do it when he was younger, but a man at his age should not be walking so hard, but he, he likes to do it. But the Lord gives strength for the labors. And um, he said to added affliction, he addeth his mercy. And to multiply trials, he's multiplied peace. That's why we prayed tonight, because to added afflictions, to, to problems. God has a storeroom, and I cannot describe or tell you how big it is, full of grace and mercy. It would not run dry. We are not bothering him when we come before the altar and ask him to heal and to save and to sanctify. We are not bothering him because that storehouse is there to pour and pour and pour as much as we could receive. You know, we talk about the pot of oil, the pot of oil he said, bring all the pots and keep on pouring and pouring. The oil never went out. The pots went out. God's grace is available. All we have to do is to open up our pots and receive, and he'll keep pouring and pouring and pouring. That's the God we serve. And it says here in Ephesians 4, 7, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. He gave men gifts. So, it's not that he's respect of persons, but he gives talents and gifts to the people to whom he think will use them rightfully in the proper place. Um, he gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers the perfecting of the saints. He gave gifts, he gave um, these gifts to people not for them to brag, but for them to help the saints strive to live perfect lives, to help God's people, not to glorify the world, um, and to help in the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ. So if you have talents, and you know, I always wanted to learn to play the piano, and when Brother Rogers was in Grenada, um, he, he knew I wanted to learn to play the piano, and he said, I have to check around and see if there's anybody, I was telling Lillian that, who gave piano lessons, and there was one lady in Guav, and she charged $4.00 for one lesson. And some people don't make that a month at that time. People didn't make that kind of money. Um, so I didn't get that piano lessons, but I used to try to learn by air. And uh, when, I moved, when I came back and I was in independence, I took some lessons from Joanna Montgomery. And then I moved up to Oswatomie, and there it went. Um, when I get to heaven, There'll be a grand piano somewhere there in my mansion waiting for me, and I'll be playing it because God is not a disappointment. He, he will get my grand piano for me, and it's not to brag or boast. And I've seen God use people in music in the ministry. I've seen God use pastors and preachers for the edifying of the saints, not to brag boast about themselves. And that's what, uh, that's what God wants us to do in ministry, your pastors, your preachers. 
preach the word of God, food for the saints, feed them like you'll feed your sheep, like you'll feed your animal. Give them what God has in store for them. He wants to see the perfection of the saints. He wants them to be well fed spiritually. Says um, he wanted people who will help his children in becoming perfect saints. He wants us to be used to teach his children to choose whom they will serve, to choose the people to whom they will listen. We should not be listening to stuff that's not edifying. And uh, a lot of times we hear things on the news and, and you wish sometimes you didn't know what's going on. He says we should not be like children being tossed to and fro and be carried away with every wind of doctrines. He want his children, those who experience his love and mercy, to live like a new creature in Christ. He doesn't want us, well, when, when um, I'll say, let me put it this way, religion first started coming to Grenada because I was a Catholic. And it just came like a bus through. It was uh, the um, Bereans and the Baptists and this and that. And people were going here one night and there another night. I was too. We wanted to hear it was something new. The Lord wants us to get established. Choose this day whom you're going to serve. Follow a path that he wants us to follow, not this doctrine said this and this doctrine said that. Let us be led by the Spirit of God so we can fulfill in our lives what God has in store for us. He says, speak nothing that is corrupt, but speak about the things uplifting, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Um, he wants us to reflect his grace, which appeared unto all men, to live a sober life for his glory. Growing in grace does not mean one is better than others, or one grows higher than the other. It means we are moving on and not returning to the beggarly elements of this world. We're moving forward. We are on a higher plane. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. If we don't get on a higher ground, the flood's going to wash us away. We need to grow and find higher ground. Give heed to the things that you have heard. God did not spare the angels that sinned. He wants to spare men who would surrender to him. Romans six twelve says, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Verse 14 says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for all ye are not under the law, but under grace. Under the law, they had a different way of serving God. Christ came, he died for us, so we do not have to live under the, the law where we got punished for every little thing that we did. We are living under grace, for which we are thankful, which we are really thankful. Being then made pure or free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness, and your fruit is unto holiness and righteousness, then to everlasting life. So when once you become a, a, a sinner saved by grace, you no longer will be serving sin but you'll become the servants of righteousness. Romans 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's a gift, eternal life. Mercy is kindness and compassion extended to the offender. So when the red light is flashing 
and you come to a stop and the cop pulled up behind you because you were speeding, you were breaking the law, I was breaking the law, we deserve to be punished. So when he writes a ticket, we can't say we didn't deserve it. No, many times they will know what went on. And many times we could tell them, well, I wasn't really aware. A lot of times that happens. You know, you got a little heavy on the gas. Um, many times, Lillian was with me and we got stopped one night and I know for sure I was not speeding because we, we, two places we had to stop because we saw more than 24. We couldn't even count them there out in the field. We just left like a block away and there was another field of deer. So I was driving slowly and this cop came up behind me and I said, I don't think I was speeding. I said, I, I just stopped here and I just stopped there. Well, we kind of figured out he had his eye on somebody or was looking out for somebody. And he said, okay, I'll let you go on and, and so on. But uh, sometimes they tell us they'll do that. But uh, when the cop stopped you, it's because you were breaking the law. But when he says, okay, I will let you go. I will not give you a ticket today. I'll just give you a warning. So we deserved to be punished, but the cop was merciful, and that's what God did for us. We deserved a punishment, but instead he gave us mercy. Grace is the abiding presence of God in our souls, which causes us to rejoice because we did not get the punishment we deserved. It is extending a blessing upon those who received mercy. When we take in, when we take inventory of our lives for all of God's grace and mercies to us, have we matured spiritually? How were we last year? Are we, have we grown? This year, is next year going to be a better year? The Lord wants us strive to enter in. We're not going to go get to heaven on flowery bed of ease. It says, sure, I must fight if I should win. We have to fight, strive to enter the kingdom. Do we see Christian growth, changes in attitudes, actions, and speech? We can never reach the height or the end of spiritual growth. We grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Something, something is wrong when our spiritual growth is stunted. How far up the spiritual ladder are we? Should we have a ladder put somewhere, spiritual ladder with inches, and every Sunday we come, you measure yourself and say, I'm up here or down here. Will that help you? God doesn't want us to do that. God doesn't want us to do that. God deals with us individually, not according to what the churches want or do. And God is the judge of who we are. Um, so I think it's a, a big mistake when Christian people say, this one is more spiritual than the other because it's not their business. God is the one to say, this one is spiritual. Um, you know, I thought of Elijah and Elisha. You know, um, God gave to Elijah and here came Elisha, and he did more miracles. Elisha was really strong. And that's up to God to do. If you're a Christian, and you profess, and you have a testimony, it's not my business to come and say, well, um, Joan is wearing a thing in her hair. 
So she is not spiritual. I'm not going to use her in my church. I'm just drawing a reference. That's not our business to measure. The scripture did say, by the fruits you shall know them, but it's not our business to measure. And um, he says, um, grace is the abiding presence of God in our souls, which causes us to rejoice because we did not get the punishment we deserve. When we take in victory, when, oh, sorry, I, I, I don't want to call names, but um, sometimes I can't even read what I write. <laughs> Do we see Christian growth in ourselves? Um, Something is wrong, I say, when, when we do not see growth. We should, we should be concerned. Uh, C.S. Lewis wrote a, a, a poem or a song about grace. It says, it's a sun coming out when you didn't expect it. Finding your way when you needed direction. Every day, we see it in so many ways. It is a cold glass of water when you feel thirsty. Things working out when you are in a hurry. It never ends like a faithful friend. If you want, want to know what grace looks like, let love open up your eyes. It's not far away. You might be amazed. It's all around. Look and see what God does for you and me. <clears throat> Seek and you will find. If you want to know what grace looks like, grace in one's life is love, compassion, kindness. Love, compassion, and kindness. If we have that in our lives, we should abound in the work of the Lord. We should do great. We sing about the wonderful grace of Jesus. We sing, mercy, there was great and grace was free. Pardon, he multiplied to me. That's the wonderful grace of Jesus. He giveth more grace when the burdens grow greater. He will be there with all the grace we need whenever we need it. So today, it is kind of too early to start praying for dying grace because we do not need it. But when death comes, he will give us that dying grace. That is how faithful God is, and that is how he gives out his blessing, his grace, his mercy, just in time when it is needed because God never fails. He's not going to fail you. He keeps his word. He keeps his promises. What we have to do is fulfill your part. Fulfill your part. So when we go to him and we say, Lord, help me with this, I need this, I need this, and the Lord will say, what about what I asked you to do yesterday and the day before? Did you fulfill that? Probably you might have to do your part before you get an answer from me. And God does work that way sometimes, you know, because we have been a little disobedient. He wants us to get back. Check yourself, get back where he can throw out his mercy and his grace upon us. God wants to help us. Folks, we are not too strong. You cannot be too strong. We are always needing, needing, needing. And I was reading about that brotherly, brotherly love, brotherly kindness. And I remember Sister Lef explaining all that in a message one time. She said, every time you go through that door, that door is kind to you. 
It opens to you, it closes to you. And whenever that door starts getting, uh, making funny noises, when it starts complaining, you take some oil and you put on the hinges and you oil it. That's what God does for us. Brotherly kindness, he opens and closes and he oils us when we need it. That's God's grace, that's God's mercy. Can we be like that door and be kind to let people in, to shut the cold out, to keep the heat in, and to not complain how many times we go through it? God is wonderful. He doesn't complain how many times we go before him. He wants us to. He wants us to come to him and bring all our cares and our problems to him. He does care for us. And thinking of the lesson again, he's fair, he's just. In whatever he gives to us, he gives us what we deserve and sometimes what we do not deserve. We serve a wonderful God and I am really thankful for him. And I'm thankful that I ever get to know a place called Rogers, Arkansas. I'd heard about it. I didn't know what it was like. But uh, it was uh, a wonderful time coming here. And I just hope that uh, I was a help. And um, I would like to see this church continue. Um, and uh, God will bless Brother Pryor and, and the work here. And the people who used to come before when he was here will start coming back. Um, Jesus never fails. He'll, his work will go on until he comes. I love him tonight. Amen.